the change in household disposable income per person. You can see it drops right down to minus 2.2%. Um, and that's the largest fall in a single year since records began in the 1950s. Claire, does Rishi Sunak get it? Absolutely, he gets it. I mean, this has been something which has been keeping us all up at night. And I think 8% inflation is incredibly serious for the country. We do know people are going to face a squeeze. But that's why you well, saw... More than a squeeze, I think, you know, for many... It's going to be very, very difficult. Like, I make no bones about that. And what you saw was action being taken in autumn last year to, to start to address this. So, I mean, there's numbers of things that we've done. I won't reel them off, but we did an energy package in, in February. We obviously made changes to things like the universal credit tax rate last autumn and increased the minimum wage. In the spring statement, you saw more measures to try and support people through this moment. But right. then you cut it again. So that £20 a week is now gone. And those families are the very same ones who are being affected the worst by this. So, so that's why was that not restored? That's a different measure that you're talking about, which was a temporary uplift, which was in line with lots of things that we did temporarily through the pandemic, which obviously aren't completely sustainable. But what we did do in autumn, which you'll know, is we did a tax cut for people in universal credit worth £2 billion to 2 million people, but still, alongside a range of other changes. But they still have to choose between heating and eating. And I think this is the point that all the opposition parties, and actually many on your own bench, are really disquieted about because we are hearing from constituents who are literally choosing, do I feed myself or do I feed my children? And they were looking to the Chancellor in this budget mm. to deliver a budget that was going to help them and they still have to make those choices. And I'm sorry, you know, the, well, uh, the fuel duty cut and things like that actually doesn't help those people. Many of them don't drive anyway. Um, I don't think he's done enough. And I think, actually, this whole thing has taken the sheen off Rishi Sunak, oh, well, politically. We'll, we'll, talk, we'll talk about that in a minute. But in terms of difficult choices, which choices would you make? Uh, Rishi Sunak, the Chancellor, was questioned by the Treasury Committee. And he said, if you want to increase the amount of money at his disposal to help people out in the way that you've just outlined, which would you go for? Higher debt, higher tax or spending cuts? So I think the, the, the plan that we came up with is, first of all, I do think we need to tax oil and gas, the super profits of oil and gas. That would have generated five billion. But that's which would have one year. That, that, that's the most, gener that's the most year, generous but prediction. But as you saw from that graph, actually, the next 12 months mm. are incredibly important. And I do wonder if he's looking ahead to headroom that he yeah. knows he's about to have in two years time for mm. an income tax hike. He could have brought that forward and actually helped the poorest now. All right. That well, that's the windfall tax. tax. That's, that's one one off tax. The second is a VAT cut. So we would cut VAT from 20 percent to 17.5 percent. And that would stimulate the economy because it bears down uh, on uh, Inflation. And how would it be paid for? Well, it would need some borrowing in the short term. Okay, so but you have yeah. to no because productivity, yeah. productivity, and we're, we're upfront about it. But productivity is the issue here. And if you've got high inflation, that dampens down productivity. A VAT well, cut would also help business. There was nothing in this budget for business well, at I, all from well, the party of so-called business. They've actually lost that's that not true. We, we changed the employment allowance, which helps people with their next payment. But just let me come back to this the VAT next payment. Point. That can I just come back to this VAT payment because I think that's a you know a policy which frankly doesn't work because what you're saying is that people. Will get a cut on the VAT on the discretionary spending. And in your previous comments, you were saying that people were choosing between heating and eating. So unless they're eating in restaurants, I don't see how you're affecting the people that you're talking about. And frankly, more borrowing at a moment when interest rates is going up, I think is really irresponsible. We know that next year we're going to spend £80 billion on servicing our debt. That's four times what we spent last year. It's almost twice the education budget. And I think we should seriously be worried about that.